Good morning, I'm Eric, and here's the message. God spoke to me this morning and told me I needed to record this video because I had a message that could heal so many people. So, he told me to read this small chapter in this book. The book, by the way, is called Lessons from Elijah by Andrew Womack. Chapter 7, Where the Fruit Is. Every year I take a team of our Bible college students with me to minister over in the UK. Last year, a woman with multiple sclerosis came to the meeting in her wheelchair. She had only been born again for two months, but had been listening to my tapes. She told me, I came to be healed. I'm getting out of this wheelchair before the week is over. During my message, I referred to her and said, we're agreeing with you and believing. Agreeing and believing. As soon as I finished preaching, the students were down there ministering to this woman. They prayed for her, and she got out of that wheelchair. Before the week was over, she was walking up and down the stairs and pushing her wheelchair. She got baptized and healed. It was awesome. Every day on the bus, the students would share what happened that day and how God had asked them to do what they felt inadequate to do. Some didn't feel adequate to lead someone to the Lord, so they would pray, Oh God, don't let anyone come up to me in prayer line who needs salvation. Let me pray for something else. Others felt inadequate to minister the baptism of the Holy Spirit or healing. What they discovered was that whatever whatever they felt was inadequate to do was exactly the thing that they had to do every time without exception. If they said, I don't want to pray for someone to be healed, so just let it be a headache, nothing big. <coughs> Then someone blind would come up to them. They would lay hands on them and their blind eyes would open. The reason these students saw God do the things they had never seen him do before was because they put themselves in a position where they needed the Lord to do something supernatural. The truth is that most of us never stretch ourselves out in faith. Therefore, we don't need God to do anything. Most of us don't ever go out and lay hands on somebody because we're afraid it won't work. Been there? Guess what? You're right. If you don't lay hands on a person, they won't be healed. However, if you do put yourself in a position where you're standing up front and you're the one who was supposed to be ministering, people will come and make a demand of you. If you just close your eyes before you know it, God will do a miracle in spite of you. Do a miracle through me, O oh Lord. Do a miracle through me. I am your servant. Jehovah, Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides. In the name of Jesus. Oh. Amen. Most of us have never allowed ourselves to be in a position where we need a supernatural manifestation. I said a supernatural manifestation of the power of God. We play it too safe. The fruit is out on the limb, but we're all hugging the trunk. We need to get out on the limb and bob up and down in the breeze a little bit. Get out there where it feels like a, where it feels a little insecure. That's where the fruit is, out on the limb. You must take a step of faith. Until you get to where you're doing something beyond your ability, there's no reason for God to show up. There's no reason for a miracle. God will always cause you to do the thing that seems impossible. If it's possible, it's not God. I'm going to read that again. If it's possible, it's not God. The Lord will lead you to do something strange, uncomfortable, and different. He will tell you to take a widow woman's last bit of food, 
knowing that the, in the natural, that food is the only way she'll ever make it. Most of us would rather do it some other way, but God's way leads us to prosper. Luke 6.38 My last quarter. When I first started ministering in Siegelville, Texas, a guy came through town asking for a handout. He needed something to eat and a place to sleep. It was pitiful. This fellow had left his wife and kids back in Michigan while he came down to Texas to look for work. He had been there two months, spent all his money, and was facing foreclosure on his home. He was down to a quarter, which he was saving to call his wife if something came up. I could tell this guy was a hard worker, but he was discouraged and was having trouble finding a job. He came by our church while my friend and I were there. I was preparing to shell out the money for a motel room and something to eat when my friend asked him, how much money do you have? The man replied, I have one quarter left so I can make a phone call. <clears throat> Give it to me, my friend said. We're going to agree with you and pray and believe God for a miracle. When my friend did that, I became really embarrassed, thinking, he's going to take this guy's last little bit of money. I felt so bad about it because my friend didn't give the man anything. This guy slept outside that night on the street. We didn't give him any food, but we took his quarter as an offering. That didn't satisfy me. I felt terrible and struggled with this all night long. However, first thing in the morning, this guy was knocking on our door. A fellow from one of the places where he had put in a job application a month or two earlier came up to him on the street that night and exclaimed, I finally found you. I'm going to make you the foreman of my ranch. You'll have good pay and a three-bedroom home. I'll even send your family and bring them here. Send for your family and bring them here. By the end of the morning, this guy had a, had a job, a new home, a big salary, and his family on the way. Praise God. I say, praise God. Praise God. God is good. I would have given the man a meal and a night's lodging, thinking I was doing something awesome for him. But my friend took this guy's last quarter and gave him a brand new job, a place to live, and brought his family together. God is awesome. Godly confidence. We have a word from God. Now I want you to listen to this. We have a word from God, but we've been timid and shy about it. None of these things we see in the life of Elijah would have happened if he had been bashful with what God had spoken to him. He went right to the top, to the king, and declared, According to my word, according to my word, most of us would immediately say, well, you arrogant thing. But you need to have that kind of attitude, not arrogance, but confidence, because of what God has done in your life. Amen. There's a fine line between godly confidence and arrogance. However, the greatest step of humility is to actually stand up and declare I'm your answer. I'm the one. I have a word from God for you. It takes a lot of humility to say something like that. It takes a lot of humility to really declare what the Lord has put in your heart. <coughs> <coughs> and get beyond the fear of man and thinking, what will they think of me? What are they going to say? God has probably spoken some things to you that you haven't seen manifest yet. So you're afraid to speak it. You're afraid to act on it. You're afraid to do the things that God has put in your heart because of what other people will say. If Elijah had been like that, none of these things would have ever taken place. Some people could misuse what I'm sharing, but I believe that you are someone who is seeking God's first it's seeking first God's kingdom. You don't minister to others for selfish reasons or to promote yourself. You genuinely love God and want to see other people blessed. Therefore, it's time you recognize that you have a word from God. 
That word is what gives you authority and power, not the recognition of people, your theological training, etc. Elijah didn't come and introduce himself. He didn't tell who he was or show the miracles he had done before to give verification and authority to what he said. He just spoke the word of God. That's what we're all called to do. God is the one who confirms the word. He's the one who brings it to pass. Our responsibility is to speak it forth in faith. Many of us just haven't been bold in speaking the word. We need to believe the word that God has given us. Preach your word. While in Kansas City, I went over to someone's house for a meal. There may have been a dozen people sitting at the table, but this one woman never said a word. Throughout the entire time, I tried to be polite and engage her in conversation, but she wouldn't talk. She just sat there. So finally, I singled her out in front of everyone and asked, Who are you? This woman was on a mission from God. She turned towards me, stated her name, and said a year ago, I was in a mental institution, condemned to be there for life. I was totally out of my mind and had lost it. Then someone gave me your message entitled Grace and Faith. I listened to that tape at least a hundred times, and it's totally revolutionized my life. I'm transformed. I'm completely free today. Then she got right up in my face. I'm going to read that again. He said, then she got right up in my face and declared, you have a revelation of grace that would set every person in a mental institution free if they could hear it. You need to be preaching grace. She just jumped all over my case. God spoke to me through her. All of a sudden, I realized that I hadn't fully esteemed and valued what God had given me to the degree that I should have. Although I had been preaching grace, I saw that this woman believed that the word, believed the word I was preaching even more than I did, and got convicted. Sometimes you need to go back and reevaluate things. God has done some awesome things in your life. He's changed you from the inside out. You need to believe the word of God and do something with it. You have a message that would change millions of people. Appreciate what you have. Don't let the devil talk you out of it. Stand on, act on, and confidently proclaim the word of God in your heart. Go out on the limb. That's where the fruit is. So friends, I'm here today to go out on the limb, to shake the tree, to get that fruit. What's the fruit? The fruit is you. I'm here to give you the message that God gave me, that you already have it. You want healing? You already have it. It's, the word says, by his stripes you were healed. <clears throat> and I'm kind of stealing this from Andrew Woman because he's amazing. But this is the discipleship that I've got. He said, by his stripes you were healed. Not you will be healed or you might be healed, or if you beg hard enough, you'll be healed. You were healed. The key is, do you have enough faith to receive that healing? Now, I don't know how to explain it anymore. Somehow I came, I came to it, and I got my healing. I just started believing. I tried believing before, and it didn't work. It didn't work. It didn't work. And because I didn't understand the nature of faith, I didn't believe God. And I can't blame you for not believing God if you didn't believe God. Even if you're a Christian and you go to church and pretend like you believe God, but then you're really like, oh God, please do this for me. Oh God, please do that for me. If you utterly understand, you know, you don't need to beg God. You just ask Him once. You say, God, this is what I need. Please do this. And then you just thank Him every day until you see it come to pass. You believe it's come to pass. You see it in your mind. God gave us, humans, a gift that He didn't give any other animals or creatures or bugs or birds or anybody. Any of the crawling things or any of the things in the sky. He gave us the gift of imagination. He gave us the ability to think. He gave us free will. He gave us the ability to meditate. In fact, the Word says... Meditate on the words daily. 
that it not leave your mouth. God wants you. I'm talking to you. God wants you to pick up his word and read it. You may say, oh, well, it's King James. They tell me that all I can read is the King James Version and anything else is, is uh, not quite accurate. And God doesn't care about that. Get a Bible that's a good translation that you can read. Read it and then refer to your King James and then you'll know what King James is saying. That's all you got to do. I got this Bible here, uh, New Living Translation. I did a lot of research, a lot of prayer, and God showed me that this was the right one. Now, I'm not trying to sell you a Bible today, but if you can see that, <clears throat> it's got some, some kind of coloring in there, a little bit of two-tone. It's got a nice brown ribbon. The color is brown. The text is brown, so it's easy on the eyes. Um, this is a small version, but you see... Here's a, a, a little section where they just give a profile about a particular Bible character. They do that every once in a while. Here's something about equal opportunity, and then it gives you a reference and stuff. And I know this may look backwards, or it may not. But, so, not to get off track too much, I did what God said, and I got this Bible. And God actually put it on my heart first. To get this same Bible for a friend of mine. And I gave it to him the other day. And you should have seen the look in his eyes. And I know that. <sighs> God is good. God is great. God is amazing. And God will do miracles in your life. If you only believe. So. <clears throat> I'm not a preacher. I'm going to tell you this. Uh, God has not called me to be a preacher. God has called me to be a prophet. And I don't know what all that entails. But I'm standing on God's word, no matter what a man or woman says, even if it's somebody who's spiritual. Now, I'll listen to everybody, but ultimately, God is the authority. Jesus Christ sacrificing himself on the cross for all our sins is what gives us the authority to speak these things. If you have taken Jesus into your heart as your Lord and personal Savior, and you truly believe that he has the power to heal, that he did those miracles, and that the same power that he had resides in you now through the Holy Spirit, then you can do miracles as well. Now, we don't go out testing. We don't stick our arm in the fire and say, okay, uh, in Jesus' name, I'm not burned. <coughs> but I tell you what, I touch pots and pans and grab things out of a out of fire because you know I got fire pit and I burn things a lot and I grab things all the time that I don't realize are hot and then all the, they you know they burn for a second and then I look at my hands and everything's fine. Sorry about that. The devil's trying to distract me. Okay. So the last thing I want to say here on this video. <sighs> My name is Eric. I'm a newly minted prophet. I'm new in the ways of the Lord. But once I saw the proof of his word, I was an atheist. You can ask my friends who are atheists. I was an atheist uh, who would ridicule the Bible for over 30 years. So but I've seen the proof. I'm also a scientist. So if I see the proof of something, I'm going to have to acknowledge it. And I've seen the proof of God's word. That's all I can tell you. So I declare that God is God. That Jesus was real, walked on the earth, was crucified, and died for our sins. And anyone that believes on him will not perish but have everlasting life. But not only that, if you believe in Jesus and his power, and what God said in his word, you can be healed today. That's right. Anybody listening to this message, God wants me to put this out there. Because you need to hear this. You need to understand that God has a will and a gift for you in your life. He's trying to show you what your gift is. And you're just not seeing it. You're, 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 you're uh, being willfully ignorant is what he's showing me. 
you need to not do that. You need to repent of, of that, that fear. The fear to go out and do what God told you to do because you're afraid, oh, my boss is going to fire me if I do this because God told me to. Now, you need to make sure you know that it was God. <clears throat> um, and you can do that through matching up if what God's telling you matches with what he told others in the Bible. And let me tell you something. God never told anybody to murder anybody. God never told anybody to lie about anybody. In fact, when you see God's chosen people in cases where they lied, that's where they did their own thing instead of doing what God told them to do. Like when Abraham went to, uh, was it Egypt or something? He went to uh, Egypt and told the, the Pharaoh that his sister was actually, or his wife was actually his sister. Well, there was some truth to that because they were interrelated in that clan. Um, it wasn't the whole truth. And he was only telling part of the truth to out of fear because he was afraid that he would be killed and they would take his wife. Uh, anyway, let's not get into that too much. That's for another day. So, do you want to be healed? Do you need healing? Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? I believe with the power vested in me by the Lord Jesus Christ, by the blood of the Lamb, that you will be healed today. Are you watching this? I'm going to claim, Heavenly Father, we're going to do a healing right now. I ask that you put your words in my mouth and let, it, let, it, let me speak it forth boldly. That a miracle happens. That many miracles happen. That people that are watching this all experience a miracle in their lives today, Lord. Let me use you. Let, let, let you use me. <coughs> let me be the vessel. Let me be your vessel right now, Lord. Let me be your vessel. Let me be your vessel. All of you and none of me. Let your will Go forth. Dama shama chin namara chowa bari ashko bari chowa bari gai shomno bari chowa huza ji ya jo. I say by the name Jesus Yeshua Yahamshia, the name of the living God Yahweh Yehovah, <coughs> the name of the living God, the name of Jesus Christ, the name of Jesus Christ, the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, I say, be healed, be healed, be healed. <coughs> Devil, get away. I cast out demons now. I send you in the name of Jesus. I cast you out. I bind you. I bind you. I bind you. You will not prosper. You will not prosper. You will not take over this person's life. You will not take over their life. You will get out. You will stop invading. You will go away. And we bring in, we bring in the love of Jesus Christ. We bring in the healing power of the Lord. I believe that you are healed in the name of Jesus. And if you believe it too, you are healed. Let me hear you say amen. Thank you, Lord. Also, a final note. You hear amen, you think it means yes, doesn't mean yes. Amen is uh, Latin, probably originally from Egyptian, and it means make it so. Just like Captain Picard on the Star Trek says, make it so. That's amen. That's all it is. So if a pastor or preacher is saying something, and... You, and he's declaring something and you want it to happen, then you say amen. If, uh, if he's saying something you agree with, then you say yes. Or you could say hallelujah or something like that. Hallelujah, I'm not sure what that means. I believe 
it means God is good or something like that. But, I mean, this isn't that big of a deal. This is just something I learned recently and I wanted to share with you. Anybody out there who wants to be doing things uh, as intelligently in the Word as possible, there you go. Okay, so anybody, I'd love to hear if you've had, if you experienced a miracle today. I'd love to hear how God touched your life through this message. Um, like I say, I'm just Eric. I'm out here on a limb. I know a lot of people are going to shrug this off, but uh, I'm not doing it for them. I'm doing it for those who are ready to believe, who have an open heart and an open mind, and are willing to receive today. <sighs> In Jesus' name, may you be blessed. And may you have this miracle. Amen.